I decide that I was going to raise quail? The main reason is health. I discovered that I have a pretty good allergy to grass, and so when we're doing hay, I get a terrible runny nose, scratchy throat, sneezing, coughing. I went to an allergist and I had allergy testing, and they did all the pin pricks, and the main thing I'm allergic to is grass. Not very helpful when you're trying to cut hay. I could try allergy shots, which were very expensive and time consuming, and may not be successful. They also said, you know, obviously there's over the counter and prescription drugs. But when I was doing my research, I found that there is an enzyme and a protein in quail eggs which are supposed to help with allergies, specifically grass allergies. And I thought, this is a great idea. Let me get some quail. We have some on the farm already. We have wild California quail, but they only lay eggs about twice a year. So I looked into the Coternix or Japanese quail, which have been bred in captivity for millennia. And those are the ones that at six weeks are supposed to lay an egg a day. So I thought, that's a great deal. I'm just gonna give me some quail and I'll hatch some eggs and I'll eat them and hopefully that will help with my grass allergy. That is yet to be discovered whether that will work or not. Another health benefit of quail eggs is that they have a higher percentage of yolk to the egg whites. So they have more uh, nutrients and a higher ratio of protein. And the number one reason I am trying to raise quail for eggs is because of health benefits. The second reason is market. We are certified organic and I thought, hey, maybe if I grow some organic quail eggs, I might be able to sell the extra that I don't need for my own health. And I looked into it. Did you know there are only three other certified organic quail egg producers in the United States? two on the East Coast and one in California. And out of those three, only one of them is truly uh, working on selling them at a marketable level. So I thought, wow, that's quite an opportunity. So I did it. We just had our organic inspection and I am happy to say that yes, we are being recommended to be certified organic for quail egg sales. We are now the fourth official certified quail egg producer in the United States. So there's many things to think about if you're going to start something on your farm. You know, is there a way to make money from it? Is it something that would be successful based upon your climate or how things are on your own farm? And then another thing that I like to think about is, will it be fun? So the third reason I decided to raise quail was I thought it might be a fun thing to try. Look at these guys. They look like they're going to be a lot of fun. Because I didn't have a lot of experience raising any type of birds, I'm really starting from scratch. I don't have any preconceived notions or bad habits, and I'm really willing to try anything. And I think that's another thing that can be helpful. So those are the three main reasons why I decided to try to raise quail. Now, obviously there's some things that are opportunities for disaster, if you wanna call them that, like raising an animal that you've never raised before. Also, is there gonna be a market? Maybe it won't be as fun as I thought it was. You know, they have a really fast turnover, so I figured, you know, quail eggs aren't that expensive, hatching quail eggs to buy. I would know pretty soon whether or not it was going to work or not. So stay tuned and we will see how it continues and if this endeavor will be successful. The quail are one week and two days old now, and they have been in the brooder in our house. We've been using the infrared heater and a heat lamp, and it's so interesting to watch them grow. They are already feathering out, and I started putting larger hay in than just the fine hay, and they really like that because they'll go after the seeds, etc. So today is a big day for them. I'm going to graduate them to the uh, pole barn shop. It's warm enough in there overnight that they'll be fine with just an infrared heater because I don't like to keep the heat lamp on overnight. Carly continues to be very good with the quail. I'm going to uh, clean out the brooder and then I'll move them. They really enjoy being able to play in the hay and eat the little seeds. And then I just put their water and the feeder on top of it. The brooder is now back in the shop. This is my new setup. I have the heat lamp where I can adjust the height 
and I still have my electric broody hen that's working quite nicely and I have graduated them to the bigger feeder let me see if that works for them they've been doing fine with the waterer they appear to be happy the quail are three weeks old now they are feathering out nicely I've seen them jumping around trying to fly they also like to dig through their bedding, try to find feed. I opened the lid and a fly got in their little brooder and they've been trying to catch it. And that one was successful. My quail brooder setup has been working well. I originally just had the electric broody hen, as I like to call it, my Bren C heater. And then of course I augmented it with the standard 250 watt red lamp. Now, the first week I definitely had to use the red lamp all day. And then the second week I transitioned to really just using the electric broody hen uh, into week two to week three. Today they're three weeks old and they are just having my little electric broody hen and soon I will move them outside to a structure which I am currently building. Next time we will be moving our quail at about four weeks out onto pasture. And this is the beginning of that structure which we are still building. Because that's how we roll on the Tomarosa. Just keep it one step ahead. If you haven't already go ahead and subscribe and we will see you next time on the Tomarosa. Oh look there's some hawks. <laughs>